So, in this podcast, I'm going to consider the following integral. And I can easily imagine somebody on seeing this integral being reminded of a, a similar looking integral with trigonometric functions. So, instead of cosh of x, the hyperbolic function, we have the cosine of x with integrated with respect to x here. So, we could easily imagine thinking that this and this integral should be calculated in the same way. And um, what I'm going to do is to show that there is a very straightforward way of calculating this, and then this integral I will look at in two ways, and I will argue that the easiest way to calculate this is different to the easiest way to calculate this. So let's start off by looking at this integral. And let's remember that the hyperbolic function cosh of x is a combination of exponential functions with an even symmetry property. And because of that, because it's made up out of exponential functions, it's going to be easier to expand this in terms of exponential functions, multiply this in, and then integrate it directly. Whereas here, the easiest way of calculating the integral is, in my opinion, to use integration by parts twice. So let's calculate this integral. So let's say that we'll give it a name, we'll call it i, is the integral of e to the minus x times cosh of x integrated with respect to x. And let's recall that cosh of x is an even combination of exponentials, so it's e to the x plus e to the minus x, all divided by 2. So now we take this, substitute that into here, and we have that our integral is the integral of e to the minus x times e to the x plus e to the minus x, this of course all in brackets, and it's going to be divided by 2, but that means I think it's just as easy to put a factor of a half outside, and this is integrated with respect to x. So now we're just going to tidy up the integrand, and e to the minus x times e to the x is e to the naught, so that's 1, and then we have plus e to the minus x times e to the minus x, so that's e to the minus 2x integrated with respect to x. So we have here now the sum of two terms to be integrated, and what we see is that our integral is a half, open brackets, and the result of the first term is x, and the result of the second term is going to be e to the minus 2x, and then we are going to have a factor of minus a half in front of it, close brackets, add an integration constant, and why is it minus a half? Well, if I differentiate this, I'm going to pull a factor of minus two in front, and minus two times minus a half gives us plus one. So this is our result for the integral, and you can see that it's very easy to calculate it in this way. It's harder to calculate it if you use the properties of the hyperbolic functions. But if you write it out explicitly in terms of exponentials, this is quite easy. And it's straightforward to check this by differentiation. You're going to get this, and then you essentially just go backwards to make sure that you get the initial integrand. So that's the easy way to calculate that integral. And what I want to do now is I want to look at this integral and try to calculate it in a very similar way. I'm going to be using complex representations of the trigonometric functions. And we'll see that you can do it in the same way, but it's, it's a bit harder. And then I will finally calculate this using integration by parts twice. So to do that, I'm going to need a bit more room, so let's move on to a new slide to look at this integral here. 
So on this slide, what I want to do is to calculate this very similar looking integral, but with the hyperbolic function replaced by a trigonometric function. And I'm going to do it using a method very similar to the previous slide, just to explore it. And the method is therefore going to use these identities that we can write the cosine as this even combination of exponentials with imaginary arguments divided by 2 and the sine in as this odd combination with a factor of 2i on the bottom. The i on the bottom needed to make this real. So what we're going to do is substitute this into here and calculate the integral. So let's get to work. What we see is that our integral is now, there's going to be a factor of a half multiplying everything, so I'll take that outside immediately. So it's a half times the integral of e to the minus x times e to the i x brackets plus e to the minus i x close brackets integrated with respect to x. So I can write this immediately, I'm just putting it on the same line to save a bit of space, as e to the, and then it's minus brackets, 1 minus i brackets x, plus e to the minus brackets 1 plus i x integrated with respect to x. So all I've done here is I've multiplied these together and then these together and I've tidied up the arguments as I'm going along. So now these are straightforward to integrate. So, so far it looks quite similar to what we did a moment ago, but of course the arguments here are complex. So what we get is a half. And then when we calculate the integral, we are going to get, remember we're integrating this term first, we're going to get minus 1 over 1 minus i times e to the minus brackets 1 minus i x. And then it's minus 1 over 1 plus i e to the minus brackets 1 plus i close brackets x, close the big brackets, plus an integration constant. How do we know this is true? If we were to differentiate this, we would pull in front a factor of minus 1 minus i, minus minus is plus, the 1 minus i's cancel, and we would regain this similarly here. So this is what we have, and this is our answer, but it's not very nice. Um, we have complex numbers in the denominator. So there is a standard method of improving that, which is to multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So what we're going to get is a half, open brackets, minus 1 over 1 minus i times 1 plus i, the complex conjugate, divided by 1 plus i. So all we're doing here is multiplying by 1, but it's appropriately chosen so that this product will be real, times the exponential, e to the minus brackets 1 minus i x, sorry, apologies for the splodge, minus 1 over 1 plus i, times 1 minus i over 1 minus i times e to the minus brackets 1 plus i close brackets x close the big brackets plus r integration constant. So now the denominator here and the denominator here are the same 1 minus i times 1 plus i 1 plus i times 1 minus i so here we're going to get 1 times 1 it's 1, minus i times i is going to give us plus 1 as well, so it's 1 plus 1, we're going to get 2, and the cross terms cancel because of the different um, minus signs. 
So the denominator is going to be 2. And we're going to get a 2 here and a 2 here, so we might as well make this immediately into a quarter. So we have a quarter. And then here we have minus 1, bracket, 1 plus i, times e to the minus... Now, if we look here, this is e to the minus x times e to the plus i x. So I'm going to factorize this and I'll do the same here. So this is e to the minus x, e to the i x. And then here, what we're getting is there's the 2 again that we've taken out already. And we have minus brackets 1 minus i e to the minus x, e to the minus i, x, close brackets, plus c. So again, I've just factorised this and written it in this way. And unsurprisingly, we have an overall factor of e to the minus x, which is just sitting here. So this is going to give us a quarter, e to the minus x, open brackets, things are starting to get simpler, and then it's minus 1 times e to the i x, and then it's minus i times e to the i x. And I'm going to separate those because they're likely going to come together separately. So I'm going to write that as minus e to the i x minus i e to the i x, and then here from these terms, it's minus 1 times e to the minus i x, so that's minus e to the minus i x. And then we have here, minus minus is plus, so we have plus i e to the minus i x, close brackets, plus c. So we have the terms here with no i in front of them, and we have the terms here with i's in front of them, so let's join them together separately. So what we get is a quarter, e to the minus x, open brackets, minus sign, e to the i x plus e to the minus i x, close brackets, and then we have minus i, open brackets, e to the i x, that's this term here. Now we look at this, this has a plus sign in front of it, and here we've taken a minus i outside, so we write that as minus e to the minus i x, close brackets, close brackets, plus the integration constant. And now we can see that everything is coming together beautifully. This combination here is going to be a cosine. It's actually 2 times a cosine, and the 2 times the quarter will give us a half. And this combination here is 2i times the sine function from this identity here. So in both cases, there's a factor of 2, which will partly cancel with the quarter. So we're going to get a half, because 2 times a quarter. e to the minus x, brackets, minus cos of x, that's our first term. And then here we have minus i. And remember, here, this combination is 2i times the sine function. The 2, we've, partly, we've used already to partly cancel the quarter but there is a factor of i. So we're going to get another i. So i times i is i squared times the sine of x, close brackets, plus c. So we have the lovely result, which we expected, that i squared is minus 1. So overall, this is plus 1. But this is real. You look at this integral, it's real. We expect the answer to be real, 
and that's a check on our workings. If imaginary terms had survived, we would think we'd made a mistake. So what we see is that our integral, which remember is the integral of e to the minus x cos of x with respect to x, is equal to, and now it's a half, e to the minus x brackets, and it's minus cos of x, and this is a plus 1 times sine of x, so I'm going to write that in front, so I'm going to have sine of x minus cos of x, close brackets, plus c. And that is our result for the integral. Now, the natural way to check this is to differentiate our result here and see that it reduces to the initial integrand. Notice, by the way, that we could also, back here, have rewritten these in terms of cos plus i sine and here as cos minus i sine and then tidied things up and seen again that the real terms survive and that the imaginary terms cancelled and we could have got this in that way but I think this is a little bit more elegant. So I'll leave the idea of differentiating this to check that it gives us the initial integrand um, for you as an exercise. And let's go back and look at this integral and calculate it in the way that I would normally calculate it. So on this final slide in this short video, what I want to do is to calculate this integral again. And I'm going to do it using integration by parts, which is the method that I would naturally use to calculate it. So I'm going to say that this is um, a product of two functions, as it is. And I don't see any natural way of doing it using, say, um, integration by substitution or inspection, and parts therefore offers itself. This is the integration by parts formula, and I'm going to say that u is, and now I have a choice here, and for this particular integral it doesn't make any difference which one we're going to use, so I'm going to say that u is e to the minus x and the derivative of v is the cosine of x. So that means that the derivative of u is minus e to the minus x and v is the integral which gives us cosine of x if we differentiate it, and that's of course sine of x because the derivative of sine is cosine. So that's what we're going to use, and this is the integration by parts formula. So therefore this tells us that i, our integral, is u times v, so it's this times this, so it's e to the minus x times sine of x, minus the integral of u prime and the derivative u prime is minus e to the minus x so that minus sign here I'll take outside of the brackets this minus sign came from our formula so we're going to get minus times minus and that's going to give us plus and then it's e to the minus x and then it's going to be multiplied by v which is sine of x so this, as quite often when we're using parts with trig functions, has not solved the integral for us, but we think if we use integration by parts again and keep going, we might get back to the initial integral here, and we might therefore be able to write down an equation and solve an algebraic equation for our integral, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to use parts again, and the thing that matters most of all is that we stick to our guns and we say the term that we obtained from differentiation is the term that we differentiate. The term that we obtained by integration 
is the term that we integrate because otherwise we just go straight backwards and we would end up with our integral being equal to the initial expression, which is true, but useless. So we have to continue doing it the way we've done it. So we're going to say that this is u and this is v prime. So u prime is the derivative again, so it's minus e to the minus x. And v is the integral, it's the function which differentiates to sine. And that's not the cosine, because the cosine differentiates to minus sine, so we need a minus sine in front of it. And the derivative of minus cosine is indeed sine. So that's what we have to substitute into this formula. So therefore we obtain i is equal to e to the minus x sine of x and then plus open brackets and now we use this formula here. So it's u times v e to the minus x times minus cos of x. So that's going to be minus e to the minus x cos of x minus, because of our formula here, and then it's the integral of, and u prime is minus e to the minus x, so that's going to give us plus sign e to the minus x, and now v is minus cos of x, so that's another minus sign, so this becomes minus times cos of x. So there are three minus signs that overall yield us um, a minus sign. Integrated with respect to x, close brackets, plus, no, not plus c, I don't need to bother writing plus c, because this has a constant hidden in it still. So now I'm going to take this over to this side because I recognize that this integral is, as we had hoped, our initial integral. So this is what we've called i. So this tells us that i here, and then over here when we bring this over because of the minus and we get plus i, so we're going to get i plus i, so we're going to get 2i, is equal to e to the minus x sine of x minus e to the minus x cos of x and now because this side is contains all the indefinite integrals and on this side I don't have any sign of the arbitrariness I'm going to write plus an integration constant. So now I divide both sides by 2, so i is equal to 1 half, e to the minus x is a common factor, so I'll pull it outside, open brackets, sine of x minus cos of x, close brackets, plus, and then it's an integration constant, and in principle, I've divided it by 2, so I could write plus c over 2, but I have no idea what this is. I'm going to just redefine c and say this is plus an integration constant. And that is our result, and that is the result we obtained from the previous slide. So, when we had the hyperbolic function, it was easiest to calculate the integral by expanding the hyperbolic function cosh in terms of exponentials. For the trigonometric function, you can do it the same way as we did on the previous slide, but I think you'll agree that's more complicated and it's easier to calculate such integrals using integration by parts twice. And with that, I will stop this podcast.